Adam, the character, is a man that will not give up. He doesn't want to give up. But he, deep down inside, he cannot and will not and does not want to go to his grave as a failure. Because all he'll do is hit the bottle and it'll just be a disaster down the line of a man who's just completely depressed and looks upon the industry as being bitter and upset. And no man wants that. It's how you deal with it along the way. And it takes someone. It takes, it takes a lot to dig deep. And you see this in the character of Adam. He's a guy that really digs deep. He's hard as nails and comes across like that. But inside, there's a human being. When do you step in and when do you step out? How real, how far do I push John Wells and, and, and Bradley and Sienna? How, far, how close do I want to get them personally to, to the realistic value of what I think a kitchen should be? And then what is it, is it, how much of it is a movie? The story, the, how you direct a movie. And I think that was probably for me one of the hardest parts. I don't want to push people beyond their boundaries or, or their need. Uh, and I found that quite difficult at the beginning. As time goes on, you start to fall into your place. And I think you sort of learn to step back. And what I want to do is, is look at the camera behind this or look behind the scenes and just see if it looks real. For me, the most important thing is not that Bradley can cook, it's can he look like a cook, can he act like a cook, and can he come across like a chef. And I think that's for me. And not just him, but everybody that stands behind him as well. This is about a story of, of a chef, a person who's gone through something that I've been through and that many chefs like me have been through. So it's, for me, it's quite personal and it's very important that the detail comes through. You can see the errors in movies sometimes when you're looking at food because it sort of bypasses it. I think what I've noticed here is the level of intricacy and detail that John has put into the food as well as the character. And for me, that's fantastic, not just him, not just the character and the food, but also what stands around it, the, f the kitchen, the people around them. And I, I, I find that's so close to what I do. I want to be in there. I want to be in that kitchen. I want to cook in that kitchen. It's a beautiful kitchen. It looks real. It is real. There are chefs in there. There are actors in there. There is real food and it tastes amazing. The hard part is stepping to one side and letting Bradley take over. I don't find that very easy at all. <laughs> he adapted to, to my world in a way that I can only but admire his approach. Complete professional uh, and I love his approach. And I love the open-mindedness of his, of his approach to me as a, as a chef and the respect he has for my world. Uh, and I like that because I have the utmost respect for him as an actor plus his world and he showed that to me. And I think that's where it just sort of came together really well. And Bradley's made my job very easy. The kitchen is operating just like a real kitchen because you can't fake it. You could, yeah, Hollywood can do whatever it wants. It can touch it up, it can, it can do whatever. But from, from my point of view, if they wanted to shoot scenes and not have the real kitchen working with real food, then I wouldn't be here. Movie or no movie, I couldn't care less. I still have my job and I know what I want to do in life, but if you're gonna bring me to the table to, 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 to be part of this, then we've gotta make it real. And I want to see the cooks cooking, I want to see the stoves on, I want to see them tasting, I want to see them seasoning, I want to see them burning themselves. That's how a kitchen is. They've got to go through the process. And do you know what the best part is? Each take, after take, after take, after take, they get better and better and better, but they also start to look tired and annoyed because they're doing it over and over again and that's exactly what a chef looks like. Tired, sweating, aggressive, all sorts of the things that you're looking for we're seeing here because John is just making them do it again and again and I'm loving it, it's great. The actors that they brought to the table are definitely the right actors. They've come into my kitchen, into my house They've asked me lots of questions. They've stood and watched my chefs. They have maybe have gone home and practiced, I don't know. Maybe they've watched a lot of cookery shows. But when they come to the set and they, they start to do an act in my world, I'm just in awe of how they've picked it up, of all of the 25 years of my work in life and training that I've gone through, and they just adapt 
within a, a few takes and they get it. And I find that absolutely extraordinary. That's the skill of the actor. That is something that is a mystery to, to me, but also I think to the industry that they can pick it up. There's a fine line with the chef of, of uh, dark side, I would say, personally. And I think when you're, when you're in a kitchen and you're striving for something in life, you can become a type of character that people don't like. What I have noticed, and through talking to Stephen about the script, um, there are scenes that I've watched Bradley shoot and be part of that is a real touch of my past. And when you're looking at it, you're thinking to yourself, wow, was I really like that? And in my own head, I'm thinking, yes, I was. But I also know that I had to go through that to come out at the other end. Your jacket, your hat is a uniform and you've got to wear it with pride. And I'm tired and I've been very tired over the years of cooking being looked upon as a second class job. And it's, a, it's, it's an industry where it's a sweaty job, it's an 18 hour day, it's probably one of the best jobs in the world if you can put your mind to it. And it's hard work, yes, but I think anyone that wants to be successful in life, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you need to put hard work into it. Nothing arrives on a silver plateau, apart from a good plate of food. I love the theatre of, of fine restaurants and you hear from time to time that fine dining is a thing of the past. We all love to be spoiled. We all love to dress up and go out and we all love to go to a place when you walk through a restaurant door, hey, Mr. Smith, so nice to see you. Come through, we've got your table ready for you. Would you like a glass of champagne? It just makes you feel royal and you expect it in the fine, fine, fine dining rooms because that's what you're paying for, that little bit of extra. But as a chef, you've got to lift your head up from the hot plate and you've got to get into the dining room. And there's one thing I've always done as a chef, I've always wanted to rule the roost in any restaurant I've ever worked in, even above the manager. And I never wanted to be dictated to by a manager or front of house. For me, it was always the other way around because no matter how beautiful the car is on the outside, it's no good if there's not a decent engine on the inside and it won't go anywhere without a good engine and a kitchen is the engine room. Hi, it's Valerie here with a little bit of love. Did you know the voice actors of Vicky Mouse and Minnie Mouse from the 1930s got married in real life? For this and more movie facts, click on more videos.